What's the most appropriate uh, business entity uh, for my business? Uh, the most common business entities here in Arizona are corporations. Uh, we have C corporations, S corporations. Uh, corporations probably have the most favorable employee benefit packages available. Uh, and there's some, but there are some significant statutory ongoing maintenance requirements with corporations which have caused people to look for some other entities. Uh, another common entity is a partnership. Uh, a partnership, there, there are general partnerships and limited partnerships. A general partnership is a common law entity where people just get together and, and form an informal partnership and you don't have to record anything or file anything with the state. Uh, but in order to get some limited liability protection, there became a statutory uh, uh, entity called a limited partnership uh, that does allow for some uh, limited liability. So a partnership can be a general partnership or a limited partnership uh, or now even a limited liability partnership uh, that gives uh, protection even to general partners. So with a typical limited liability or with a typical limited partnership, you have two types of partners. You have general partners and you have limited partners. Limited partners tend to be the passive investors. The general partners are those that actively direct the, uh, the management of the entity. Uh, then another entity that has become very common uh, in, in recent time and the newest of all of the entities is a limited liability company uh, known as an LLC. And with an LLC, we have manager managed, LLCs or member managed LLCs, uh, depending on the, the nature of the business, the type of management that you want to have. Uh, another advantage or benefit of the LLC is you can elect the type of tax treatment you want. You can elect to be taxed as a partnership, you can elect to be taxed as a corporation, a C corporation or an S corporation, or if you're a single member LLC, you can elect to be taxed as a disregarded entity. So there's a lot of tax flexibility. And again, these all vary depending on the states that you operate in. So if you're operating in multiple jurisdictions, you need to look at the, uh, uh, the, the laws in all the jurisdictions where you will operate. Uh, but in Arizona, uh, most of these business entities uh, here have very favorable uh, tax treatment, very favorable asset protection treatment. Uh, some jurisdictions, interestingly, with LLCs, they become so common that people sometimes create them without uh, looking at uh, all the, the, the pros and cons and possible downsides. And in talking about jurisdictions, while all states in the U.S. recognize LLCs, not all countries do. And we've seen a lot of situations recently where Canadians have come down here and formed LLCs thinking they're going to be taxed as a partnership. Uh, they have partnerships in, in Canada and they want that type of treatment. And here in the U.S. you can create an LLC and be taxed as a partnership. But Canada doesn't recognize LLCs. Uh, as a to be taxed as a partnership. So if you create an LLC in the United States, you're going to be taxed as a corporation in Canada. So if, if that's an issue, then uh, that's something that you need to, to consider. And then the other uh, very common business entity is a sole proprietorship. Again, uh, no filing necessary. You can file for a name, if you, a name recognition if you want, or uh, but there's there's no uh, no filing. But also really no significant statutory. Uh, or, or uh, asset protection benefit and, and really no uh, significant uh, tax benefits. So how do you decide which of these is best for your business entity? But it really depends on the situation. Uh, different entities are, are, are better for, for different situations. It's going to depend on how many owners are going to be involved, what their roles will be. Uh, it will depend on whether the owners are going to be a active owners or passive owners. It will depend on who you want to control the entity and how you want that control to take place. What jurisdictions will you operate in? Uh, you need to make sure that you're going to receive the legal treatment that you're expecting in whatever jurisdiction you'll be operating in. How many employees will you have? Will employee benefits be an important part of what you want? Corporations tend to, to come out a little bit ahead on, on that area. Um, how diligently will the owners and managers uh, adhere to and attend to the business formalities. Corporations have more business formalities than the other ones and if you misstep and you don't uh, take care of all those formalities, you may not get all the benefits of the entity that you're looking for. 
Uh, to what extent will the profits be reinvested in the business entity or to what extent will they be uh, taken out and, and distributed? Uh, that may uh, impact the type of entity you want and how you want the entity created. Uh, what tax treatment do the owners want? And again, with LLCs, at least in Arizona, you have uh, a great uh, deal of flexibility, uh, but there are some limitations on those. Uh, and then the, the bottom line is really wanting to coordinate with your tax preparer, with your, with your CPA, to make sure they're, they're on board as to what makes sense. And so you're going to want to visit with both your attorney and with your CPA to discuss the limited liability, uh, asset protection benefits, the tax benefits, and make sure all your professional advisors are on the same page as to which entity will work best for you.